Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 259. So we left off in our last tutorial. Uh, we'd actually gone ahead and taken all the code that we had used to generate a melee weapon and narrowed it down to one line of code. And of course we had to come through our item generator and create a new method for it. Uh, which is fine. We just created an overloaded method for our normal uh, create item method. Uh, today I actually wanted to start working on uh, the setup stats. And to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and grab these two lines up here. Whoops, I accidentally erased them instead of cutting them out. And I'm going to go ahead and put them down here. And I'm actually going to clean this method up a bit as well. As I've already uploaded the videos and I want to keep it as clean as possible I'm going to go ahead and comment these out and we're going to start getting into a lot of uh, stats for a mob so I'm actually going to go ahead and create a, a debug console of sorts that displays to the screen so let me see we're going to need an on GUI for that so I'm going to go ahead and throw that right below here so it's just void on GUI and let's make a flag for it uh, so we can turn it on and off uh, in the inspector so I'm gonna come up here uh, we'll get rid of these because I'm not gonna be using those anymore and we're gonna use um, so we'll have to make it public it'll be a type bool and we'll just say uh, debug and we'll start it off equaling false so we'll save that off. We'll come over. We might get some errors because we deleted those variables, but actually they're commented out, so you won't see it. Uh, actually, we're not going to see it until the mob is actually in game here. So let's open this up, grab a mob. All right, so there's our debug. When we turn it on and off, we'll have a basically like a character panel, but for our mob pop up here, and it's not going to be anything fancy. It's not going to look nice. It's going to be a bunch of text, uh, and it's just you know, so we can actually see the values. All right, so that's what we're going to work on in the next few tutorials. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right into that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do is start setting it up so that we can actually see, or so they can actually have vitals when they spawn. So let's do that now. So I'm going to uncomment the first line for the constitution since that affects uh, two vitals and a few skills. We'll start off with having that one turned on. And I'm also going to come down here to my on GUI, and I'm going to go ahead and put the check in for that flag that we made for the debug. Uh, basically if it's on we want to have our de debug message displayed so we'll set that up and we're going to set up a little loop in here to display all of our, uh, our, our attributes to start off with. Uh, but first let's go up here and actually set this to true to begin with. Uh, let's see if we have any errors occurring. Uh, we have a few here. Uh, Constitution spelt wrong. Uh, it's not finding some stuff. Okay, well, let's start off the top. Uh, Constitution. Uh, that should fix that one. Uh, oh, here we go with the awake function. If we actually take a look here, uh, if we go into base character and we look at awake, uh, we notice that it's a virtual, so it's meant to be overwritten. And if we go to the PC one, and we look at the awake function here, we'll notice that it has the new keyword before void and we're still calling the base uh, because we still actually want this stuff to go off. We probably really should move this out to another method and then just call it in the awake. Uh, there might be a few other things we want to add here, but for now we're just going to do the exact same thing with the mob. I'm uh, going to come up to the awake. Uh, I'm going to add new. And I'm going to go ahead and call the base dot awake. Uh, before the spawn and if we close that off all right that gets rid of all of our errors and we'll go ahead we'll start it up uh, look at the dungeon guardian and I wanted that to start off as true uh, uh, let's find him down here it's uh, not going to be true because uh, when you first hook it up it takes that as the the default value and changing it in code does not necessarily change it over here. 
Uh, so it is going to be off by default unless we go ahead and delete it, then re-add it. Uh, we might actually be able to activate it in the prefab. I'll try it this way. Uh, resources, mobs, uh, dungeon guardian, ticket. Let's start it up. Uh, there we go. Now it starts true. So let's go ahead and actually, uh, we'll just start off very simple. We'll throw out the debug line for uh, this here. So we're going to say uh, gy dot, and I'm just going to make them labels. We need a new rect. And for now, I'm just going to start this off 10 from the left, 10 from the top. And I don't know, I'll make it 300 long and 25 high. Uh, we'll just put a comma in there and I'm going to say constitution. And then we're just going to append onto it the value that we have stored for our constitution. And uh, that should be it. Go ahead, we'll close that off. I uh, will save it and let's just make sure it's positioned right. So we'll start it up and constitution 100. And if we take a look, that's uh, what we're setting it to in the setup stats. So just to make sure, let's change this down to, uh, I don't know, 10. And when we start it up, it should be 10. And there we go. So we know that we can set the the uh, values and we can retrieve the values and display them to the screen. Uh, the next thing I want to do actually is go ahead and just make a loop that iterates through all of the uh, attributes and uh, displays them one after the other. So let's go ahead, we'll leave a line here. Let's, let's run down to the bottom, we'll leave a line and we'll just go ahead and make a for loop. We've done this a few times, I like to keep it uh, repetitive. So we'll say int, uh, you see in T for my counter, we'll start it off at zero. I uh, will say it's less than enum. Actually, we need to add the systems class before we can do that. Uh, so, system. Now, I always like to uh, leave a comment on why we're adding this. Add it to access the enum. And if you actually come over to, let me see, was it base class we used it on? Yep, right down here. We can go ahead and just cut and paste this whole thing uh, in between the square brackets. That's the exact command we need to, let me see, attribute name. Yep, that's the one we need. Uh, so you want to come down right here. We'll just paste it in. And all we're doing is just saying, hey, get the values of type of attribute name, which is what we call their attributes, and get the length. So that tells us how many attributes we have in there. So we're going to go through. Grab that, then we're going to increment our counter and we'll put this in there. Now we have to go through and actually get the string value here. And we'll also want to go through and change. Well, we can do this right now. We can, we're going to want to typecast the value that we're passing in as an attribute name. And we're passing in CNT. Uh, we're going to be getting the base value, and right here we want the string. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll have to concat onto that. And to get the string, we actually have this done as well. Um, uh, pretty sure we have it. Yeah, right here. So there you go. You didn't even have to look it up or type it or anything like that. We already have it done. So we're going to grab the attribute name of the value that we're currently on, convert it to a string, append on a colon, a space, and then the value. Uh, so let's see if we have any errors. Uh, we have a few. Uh, get primary attribute int. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually, we're just supposed to pass in an integer here. My bad. Uh, let's bring this over. Uh, come back. Um, everything's done. So let's go ahead. We'll start it up. And we'll notice that they're all in the same spot. That's easy to fix. Uh, we're going to come back. And on our line here where it just keeps increasing, uh, down 10. Oh, sorry. Uh, it start, 
<laughs> Let me rephrase that. Okay, we'll notice that our GUI line here, uh, all of them are placed 10 from the left and 10 from the top. Uh, they're all 300 wide and 25 high. What we want to change is this value here. We want the first one to start at 10, uh, but we also want to append onto that uh, the value that we're at, so CNT, and let's multiply it by our line height, which is 25. And then let's also add on a little buffer, uh, basically spacing between the lines, uh, maybe five. So we'll go ahead, we'll try this out again, and we'll shoot a nice little list of them here. There we go. Uh, we're probably gonna wanna tighten that up a bit. Let's get rid of that little buffer, the five. Now it might be a little bit different for you. I'm running in 720p for the recording, so I know I'm gonna have a lot more things going here. Uh, that's still a little bit big for my screen. Uh, so we'll bring it down just a little bit more. And I probably uh, should adjust my line height as well. Uh, yeah, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and make a variable. Well, I don't wanna really make a variable for this. We'll just keep adjusting. But since this value has to be the same as this, it would be a good idea to make a variable at some point, but right now I'm not too worried about it. Uh, that's pretty good. I should be able to get my uh, values down here and uh, my skills I'll just put over to the side here. Uh, but anyway, there we go. But the only one we have set is the 100, or so the constitution at 100. Uh, so let's go through and actually set them all to uh, 100. So we can do the exact same thing uh, that we did up here, a for loop. And uh, for starters, we'll just set them all to 100. Uh, so we're gonna go through and right here we're, we need an integer. So we're just gonna pass in C and T. And we're going to be setting all the base values to 100. We'll leave a space right there. And we'll go ahead and start it up since there's no errors. And we'll notice they're all set to 100. And let's do one final thing before we go. And let's randomize this just a little bit. So I'm going to use a random range. Um, not getting access to it. Random. And for some reason it won't let me access the value, so I'll look into that a little bit later on. For now we'll just keep it at 100. And let's end this video here because we do actually have something displaying and we'll start working with the values uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you want to see more, make sure to uh, give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.